Welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham, and today I'm going to show you all about text wrap in Adobe InDesign. So I have this photo and text frame, and you can see that the text is overlapping the photo, and I don't want that. Now, if you're used to Quark Express, you might think that moving the picture frame on top of the text frame would cause the text to wrap around or run around the photo. If I select the photo and bring it to the front, however, that's not what happens. The photo is now simply on top of the text. The stacking order of the objects does not affect the runaround in InDesign. I'll undo that and go up to the Window menu and open the Text Wrap panel. At the top of the panel, you see a series of icons, and right now I have no text wrap applied. I'll click the next icon, which is Wrap Around Bounding Box, and that simply pushes the text away from the frame, and you can see how the text reflowed. You might have noticed that this text frame became overset. And no matter how big I make the frame, the text is still overset. That's because this text frame is being affected by the text wrap on the Photos frame. So I can open the Text Frame options under the Object menu and click Ignore Text Wrap, and now it's no longer overset. You can see that the text below the photo is right up against its frame. You can add some space to that here in the Text Wrap panel. I'll change the bottom offset, and now you can see a thinner blue line indicating that offset. I can click this lock icon to make the settings on all four sides the same, or I can change them independently. I'll add some to the top, and now if I move the frame, you see that there's some padding there as well. Here I have a vector graphic, a placed illustrator file, and rather than having the text wrap around the frame, I want it to wrap around the edge of the image. So I'll choose the next icon, which is Wrap Around Object Shape. That's not quite what I had in mind, so I'll go down here to the Contour options, and right now it's set to the Bounding Box. You can see the Bounding Box, it's the light brown line, and that's just like the rectangular bounding box you'd see in Illustrator. So I'll choose Detect Edges, and now InDesign finds the edges of the artwork and draws a path. It's a faint blue line and it's hard to see, but if I increase the offset, and you can only change the offset all the way around when using Detect Edges, you'll see the path move away from the image. I'll select the frame now, and you can tell InDesign to wrap the text on both sides of the image, or just the left, or just the right. Or you can use the largest area setting. So InDesign will use the side that has the most room, and wrap the text in that direction. If I move the frame to one side, the text wraps to the other, and if I change my mind, the text wraps accordingly. Now, often with an irregular shape, the text wrap needs some fine tuning, and you can actually go in and modify the path that InDesign created when it detected the edges. I'll double click to select the content of the frame, and I'll zoom in. Now I'll just grab the Direct Selection tool, or the white arrow, and I can move these points just as you would any vector path. You usually have to move the points tighter than you would think. You can also use any of the pen tools, and I'll choose the Delete Anchor Point tool and get rid of some of these points. That went a little too far, so I'll undo that, and you can just keep fine-tuning until you get the look you're after. I'll press the W key to go into preview mode, so you can see those changes better. Here I have just a regular bounding box text wrap, and I'll increase the offset. I have the link turned on, so the settings will be the same all the way around. This next icon will jump the text from top to bottom. In other words, no text will flow on the sides of the frame. The next icon will jump all the text below the object to the next column. I'll put it back to the bounding box, and you can also choose to invert the text wrap, which puts the text inside the object. I have never found a use for this, but there it is. Now what if you want the text to follow the contour of something in a photo, for example the side of this guy's face? You'll first have to create a clipping path in Photoshop. I'll switch over to Photoshop, and there's my clipping path, called Path 1, and it's a special vector path that I've drawn around the person. I'll go back to InDesign, and now when I choose to wrap around the object shape, you can see in the contour options I have Photoshop Path chosen, and there's Path 1, the name of my path. Again, you can adjust the offset, and I'll make my picture frame wider so you can see more of the background and the text wrapping around the guy's head. This is an example of when you'd want the text frame to be on top of the photo, so the fact that the stacking order has no effect on the text wrap makes this possible. I'm going to press Command-D to place this image again, and this time I'll check Show Import Options and Replace Selected. And with Show Import Options on, I can tell InDesign to apply that clipping path, and now you can see that the background gets cut out. I still have the same text wrap applied, so there's that effect. 
You don't have to have a clipping path in your image. Nobody likes drawing those after all. You can use an alpha channel. Here I have such a channel in my Photoshop file. It's simply a mask that's black and white in shades of gray, which I created, and it's called Alpha 1. So when I place it into my InDesign document and have Show Import Options turned on, I can choose the Alpha channel, and there's the preview. Now in the Text Wrap panel, I'll choose Alpha channel and then the name of the path, Alpha 1, and as before, InDesign draws a vector path around the edges that you can modify. So it's the best of both worlds, the transparency of an alpha channel with the control over the path. There's one more button on the text wrap panel. Here I have a big vector G, and I have detect edges chosen as my contour option, and I can check include inside edges. Now the text will actually wrap inside those negative spaces in the shape. You have a lot of options and flexibility for text wrap in InDesign, giving you more ways to be creative.